The film begins with Gianni, a successful and charming businessman, out for his morning run. Despite his polished appearance, he is actually a womanizer. Massimo. Massimo. Eccolo Massimo. He adopts different personas to date younger women. A me quando mi chiamano col nome di un altro. Francesco. Ti giuro mi fa impazzire. Francesco, Francesco. Show me, show me. Later that day at the country club, his friend Fabio shares with everyone how Gianni used three fake identities in one week just to meet women. In response, Gianni jokes that maybe Fabio's wife wants to date him too. Later, he has lunch with his friend Dante, who is also his doctor. Dante asks if chasing women with fake identities is exhausting. He advises Gianni to settle down with a mature woman, reminding him he's almost 50. Just then, a call interrupts their conversation. Gianni says it's about his mom. Dante is delighted, hoping they have reconciled. However, Gianni bluntly reveals that his mother has passed away. After lunch, Gianni hurries to the cemetery, but gets caught up in a Filipino funeral procession, mistaking it for his mother's. He quickly offers a fake apology to the family before finding the correct location. At the funeral, his twin brother delivers a heartfelt farewell, but Gianni skips his own speech. While explaining why he was late, he uses broad gestures to refer to Filipinos, suggesting they are typically maids. This shows that he also harbors racist attitudes. After the funeral ends, Gianni's brother hands him the keys to their mother's house. Inside, family photos make him a bit emotional as he sits in her wheelchair. Soon, he turns on her old radio and starts dancing to a song when a young woman named Alessia enters, surprising him. Permesso? Buongiorno, sono la nuova vicina. Io faccio assistenza domiciliare alle persone come lei. A persone come me? Sì. Alessia, the new neighbor, says she used to assist disabled people at a nursing home. Seeing him in the wheelchair, she offers to help if he needs anything. Gianni, ever the player, immediately begins pretending to be disabled. The next day at work, we see Gianni's ruthless businessman side as he berates his team during a meeting. He reminds them that his sneaker company, High Speed, sells a lifestyle, not just shoes. The new intern Julia suggests diversifying marketing by including Paralympic athletes to connect with disabled customers. Gianni scoffs, saying his clients are Instagram influencers, not disabled people who barely use one pair of shoes their whole lives. To set an example, he fires Julia on the spot. After the meeting, Gianni gets a bag of old clothes from his assistant Luciana and hurries back to his late mother's home. Pretending to be disabled, he guilt trips Alessia into having coffee with him in his kitchen. While chatting over coffee, Gianni learns she's more interested in a fun, single life than in serious relationships. Gradually, Gianni realizes Alessia prefers outgoing, healthy, and wealthy men, making his middle-class handicapped act backfire. As Alessia leaves after coffee, Gianni sees his chance slipping away. He calls out, revealing he is the owner of High Speed, with 148 stores across Europe and a huge villa. Alessia, slightly taken aback, quickly changes her attitude and invites him to her country house for lunch the following Sunday. On Sunday, he arrives at the address but parks far away. Seeing the clouds gather, he puts on a raincoat and wheels himself to the house with difficulty. Inside, he meets Alessia's family, including her grandmother on oxygen support, her brother, and her parents. Then, Alessia's sister Chiara arrives in a car. He's thrilled by her beauty, but then notices she uses a wheelchair. Finally, Gianni realizes why Alessia invited him, to set him up with her disabled sister, not herself. After lunch, he chats with Chiara outside. She mentions she loves sports and is a professional violinist. Uninterested but polite, he simply nods without adding much to the conversation. Back in Rome, Gianni tells his friends about Chiara. His doctor friend Dante asks about her personality, while others ask if she's attractive. He admits she's beautiful, but says he's not into disabled women. As the talk continues, his friend Fabio dares him to sleep with her, and Gianni accepts with a smug grin. Meanwhile, Alessia visits Gianni's mother's home to return his raincoat, but instead meets his brother, who is unaware of Gianni's lie. She tells him about Gianni's charity work in Botswana and sympathizes with his disability. Surprised, Gianni's brother plays along. Later, he confronts Gianni about the lie, urging him not to stoop so low. Gianni deflects the topic by mocking his brother's baldness. The next day, before heading to work, Gianni leaves a voicemail for Chiara, asking her out on Saturday. To his surprise, 
Chiara visits him that morning at his office. Realizing he has no wheelchair there, he awkwardly sits on his desk. Chiara says she can't make it on Saturday, but invites him to watch her disabled tennis tournament that day. Trying to impress her, Gianni fabricates a story about his company's support for disabled athletes. Later, Gianni, in his wheelchair, watches Chiara's intense tennis match and is genuinely impressed. After the match, she invites him to lunch with her disabled friends, but the lunch doesn't go as he had hoped. Constantly bombarded by questions about his disability from her friends, Gianni feels overwhelmed and even has a nightmare that night. In the next scene, Gianni flies to Turin, where Chiara is performing with her orchestra. He buys an electric wheelchair from a local man and takes a balcony seat in the theater. For the first time, he is genuinely moved by classical music. After the concert, he surprises Chiara, who asks why he's in Turin. He lies, saying he was nearby for work and dropped in by accident. They then head to an upscale restaurant for dinner. During the meal, Gianni tries to confess about lying regarding his disability, but changes his mind and admits he lied about being nearby. He reveals he came to pursue her. However, his clumsiness with the electric wheelchair is apparent as he keeps bumping into tables during their conversation. After dinner, Chiara takes Gianni to her hotel where they kiss. However, she stops things from progressing further, which disappoints him. After returning from Turin, Gianni asks Dante if paraplegics can get erections. Predicting where the conversation is going, Dante explains that they can, but for Chiara, pleasure depends on the location of her spinal injury. He then advises Gianni to forget the bet, reminding him that he's almost 50 and not a teenager. Gianni playfully dismisses it. In the next scene, Gianni invites Chiara to dinner the following day, and then drives to meet the girl he encountered during his morning run. Meanwhile, Chiara has a heartfelt conversation with her sister. As they share a cigarette, she expresses her happiness that Gianni sees her as a complete woman, rather than just feeling sorry for her. The next day, Chiara visits Gianni's large house. She moves around the furniture with ease, while Gianni keeps bumping into things in his wheelchair. At dinner, she asks how he became paralyzed. Gianni fabricates a story about having an accident similar to Christopher Reeve, the Superman actor. However, Chiara points out that Christopher Reeve was paralyzed from the neck down. To save face, Johnny quickly changes his story, saying he fell off a pony, which amuses Chiara. Carefully, she shares her own story of a terrible car accident. Her passenger only broke his collarbone, and her violin on the next seat wasn't even scratched. But, cruelly, she lost the use of both her legs. Trying to lift the mood, Gianni reveals his surprise. He hands her a rubber noodle to put around her chest, then presses a button, and water fills the dining room, rising up to their chests. Supported by the rubber noodle, they float effortlessly in the water. They share a passionate kiss and make love. Afterward, when the water drains, Chiara tells Gianni she cannot feel anything below her waist. Gianni, moved but confused, admits he only felt it on his forehead. As she sleeps, he takes a selfie with her to brag to his friends. The next day, he shows the photo to his friends, winning his bet with Fabio, but conceals that Chiara can't feel anything. That night, Fabio's wife visits Gianni's home. Wearing a nightgown, she accidentally breaks a wine glass. Jokingly, she says she's as clumsy as a disabled person, offending Gianni. Without explaining why, he asks her to get dressed and leave. Days go by without Gianni and Chiara talking. Gradually, Gianni's perspective on life begins to shift. He asks Luciana to bring back the intern, who proposed marketing the shoes to paraplegic athletes. During his next morning run, he calls Chiara, requesting a meeting to make an important confession. Ciao. È strano, sembra che tu sia in piedi. Io? No. Perché dici così? He then visits her home. Chiara leads him to her room and asks him to wait while she practices the violin. For the first time, he sees photos of her when she could still walk. Overwhelmed by his deceit, he stands to confess, but sits back down before she turns around. Observing Gianni's improved wheelchair skills, Chiara comments that he's getting better at using it. They kiss, and she inquires about his confession. Lacking the courage to confess, Gianni quickly changes the subject. They laugh nervously, as Chiara recalls her ex-boyfriend leaving her after the accident. With a heavy heart, she admits that lies and deception hurt more than her physical injuries. 
Hearing this, Johnny becomes fearful and decides to keep his secret for now. Chiara asks him to introduce her to his friends, so he pressures Dante and Luciana to join them for dinner. On the way, Dante suggests Gianni might be in love and urges him to end the deception. He even threatens that if Gianni doesn't confess, either he or Luciana will. During dinner, Dante pushes his friend to tell the truth. Seeing Gianni hesitate, Dante decides to do it himself, but Gianni spills soup on his suit and asks him to come to the bathroom. Inside the bathroom, Dante insists that Gianni must confess as the lie has gone too far. Their talk is interrupted by a restaurant staff member. Gianni quickly pretends to use the toilet to conceal that he can walk. Throughout the night, he continues pretending to be paralyzed, keeping the truth hidden. Gianni's brother visits Alessia with flowers and reveals his lies. Furious, she confronts Gianni and slaps him, giving him a two-day ultimatum to tell Chiara the whole truth. Later, Gianni visits his estranged father, who is also a womanizer. In a heartfelt talk, his father expresses regret about being a bad husband and urges Gianni not to repeat his mistakes by confessing the truth. Gianni, however, fears losing Chiara if she knows the truth. It's clear he has fallen in love with her. Their conversation is interrupted by an announcement about a trip to Lourdes, a famous Catholic site in France known for its healing waters. This gives father and son a wild idea. Gianni will take Chiara to Lourdes, pretend the water cured his fake disability, and win her back. Meanwhile, Alessia gently advises her sister that Gianni might not be the best match for her. Their talk is interrupted by a call from Gianni, asking Chiara to go to Lourdes with him. Alessia, surprised, asks why they would go to Lourdes. Chiara speculates that Gianni might be hoping for a miracle. Tired of keeping the secret, she reveals she knows Gianni can walk. Being in a wheelchair herself, she recognized his awkwardness immediately. Chiara admits she let the lie continue because it felt nice to be loved, even if it was under false pretenses. In the next scene, the group arrives at the Notre Dame of Lourdes Sanctuary and is welcomed by Father Walter, an Italian priest. He asks Gianni to meet him alone inside the cathedral. When Gianni meets him, Father Walter reveals he knows Gianni isn't handicapped. Without waiting for an explanation, he warns Johnny not to stand up in front of everyone, as it could give people false hope and make them believe in miracles. Shortly after, Johnny exits the cathedral, still pretending. Meanwhile, Chiara unknowingly steps into the road, unaware of an approaching truck. Seeing this, Johnny gets up and pulls her to safety. Though shaken, she pretends it's a miracle that he can walk. She then gets on the bus and leaves, crying. Back in Rome, Gianni's life begins to fall apart. At the club, Fabio, aware of his wife's affair, confronts him. To make things worse, Luciana resigns. Seeking comfort, Gianni visits his mother's grave and tells her he loves her for the first time. He then rehires Julia and assigns her the task of launching the new ad campaign she had proposed, featuring disabled athletes. Desperate to find Chiara, Gianni rushes to her parents' house, where her grandmother confronts him. He expresses his feelings, explaining that Chiara hasn't been answering his calls. The elderly woman responds that Chiara is too wise to fall for someone like him, knowing exactly what men like him want. Gianni admits that he is 50, physically fit, but a mental mess. He declares his love for Chiara and vows to change, accidentally breaking a vase in his emotional outburst. Hearing this, the grandmother reveals that Chiara is catching a bus to the Minotti Theater in Spoleto. She gives him the route and timings, urging him to catch her at Nami if he hurries. Before he leaves, she warns him that if he ever hurts Chiara again, she will make sure he experiences a real handicap. Thankfully, Gianni manages to catch the bus in time. However, Chiara, not easily swayed, tells him she doesn't need anyone's pity. She then ignores his pleas and asks the bus driver to move on. In the next scene, Gianni is back in Rome, running with all his might. Burdened by guilt, he doesn't stop until his heart races too fast and he collapses to his knees. To his surprise, Chiara appears in her wheelchair. When he asks why she's in Rome, she playfully mimics his earlier excuse, saying she was just passing through and decided to look for running trails. Deciding to leave the past behind, she hugs him and gives him a ride on her lap. In the final scene, Gianni, his brother who is now dating Alessia, 
and Kiara's family celebrate his 50th birthday. The film ends with Gianni lifting Kiara in his arms, and they dance slowly. Well, that's the end of this recap. How did you like it? Let me know your thoughts as comments. Also, consider subscribing this channel for more interesting movie and series recaps. See you in the next video, bye bye.